Welcome to part two in the introduction to hemostasis and coagulation series. I am Kathleen Wong and I am a hematopathologist at the University of Alberta Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This slide outlines the three primary objectives of this series of sessions. Previously in part one, we discussed normal hemostasis and described primary hemostasis as the interaction between the blood vessels subendothelial collagen layer platelets and von Willebrand factor, and emphasize that normal blood calcium concentration, pH and temperature are essential to overall hemostasis and coagulation. Now we're ready to move on to part two, secondary hemostasis and coagulation. Secondary hemostasis is coagulation, the process of converting liquid blood into a solid clot. The sequential activation of coagulation factor proteins in an orderly fashion is analogous to dominoes falling over in a preset pattern. The end product is a stable and strong fibrin blood clot. Remember that tissue injury has triggered primary hemostasis to build a stable foundation of activated platelets bound to a von Willebrand factor and the exposed subendothelial collagen layer. Once this foundation is built, the sequential activation of coagulation factors may occur through three pathways. Both the extrinsic and intrinsic pathway activate the common pathway, which results in the generation of thrombin or activated factor 2, and then converts fibrinogen into the fibrin blood clot. Let's start with describing the extrinsic pathway and how it activates the common pathway. The tissue injury that has triggered primary hemostasis by exposing the subendothelial collagen layer has also exposed a substance called tissue factor that resides outside the endothelium. Exposure of tissue factor directly activates the extrinsic pathway by activating factor 7. The tissue factor and 7A complex then directly activates factor 9, which is the last step of the intrinsic pathway, and factor 10, the beginning of the common pathway. In the laboratory, extrinsic pathway function is evaluated by the prothrombin time test, also known as the PT. The intrinsic pathway involves the sequential activation of factors 12, 11, 9, and 8. Together, factor 9A and its cofactor, 8A, and with the help of calcium in the blood and the activated platelet surface, activates factor 10 and the rest of the common pathway. In the laboratory, intrinsic pathway factor function is evaluated by the activated partial thromboplastin time also known as the APTT or PTT test. The common pathway is where activated factor 10 and its cofactor activated 5 result in the activation of factor 2, generating thrombin, also known as factor 2A. Thrombin is the key to secondary hemostasis because of its numerous roles. Thrombin activates the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin, and it also activates factor 13, to cross-link and stabilize the forming fibrin clot. Not shown in this diagram, thrombin also directly activates factors 11 and 8 in the intrinsic pathway and factor 5 in the common pathway as shown through a positive feedback mechanism. Finally, thrombin also directly activates additional platelets. In the laboratory, the common pathway factors and their function are assessed by evaluating the PT and PTT tests in conjunction. You may wonder why the intrinsic pathway is even necessary if tissue factor directly activates the extrinsic pathway after tissue injury, which then directly activates the common pathway to generate thrombin and fibrin clot as it is shown here. That is because in real life, once the extrinsic pathway is activated and there is an initial burst of thrombin made through the common pathway, the extrinsic pathway is rapidly shut down. Therefore, in order to propagate further thrombin generation and clot formation through the common pathway after the extrinsic pathway is turned off, thrombin must directly activate the intrinsic pathway further by activating factors 11 and 8, as well as the common pathway by activating more factor 5. This is a slide that summarizes secondary hemostasis. In summary, tissue injury triggers the extrinsic pathway by exposing subendothelial tissue factor and directly activated factor 7 to form factor 7a. The tissue factor factor 7a complex then directly activate the common pathway by activating factor 10. 
with the initial burst of thrombin made, the extrinsic pathway is shut down, and thrombin must propagate its own generation by directly activating factors 11 and 8 in the intrinsic pathway as indicated by the green positive feedback arrow shown, as well as activating more factor 5 through the common pathway. This concludes part 2 on secondary hemostasis. In the next portion, we will discuss how the prothrombin time and partial thromboplastin time tests are performed in the clinical lab.